So um, put the date on there if you ever feel like going back in time and looking up the correction on this, then you know. Here you go. Um, solve for an indicated side or angle. <clears throat> Always remember, final answer rounded to two decimals, regardless of what the question says. Okay. This particular one, I can tell right away this is, this is side, angle, side. There's no pair to be had, so SAS. That means I have to use cosine law. And you should have a formula under SAS that guides you, right? So to find this side here, m squared, I'm going to have to take these two sides and do that. Minus 2 times 35.8 times 27.4 times cosine of 29. All right, so if you have that, you get a mark. Just for the fact that uh, you pick cosine law and you, you set it up. And now we're going to get you another mark for the final answer. So I would like to see the intermediate step, so what the root and what you get here. When you type that in, you get 316, 536, and something. So taking the root of that gives you 17.79 inches. Okay. If you forgot units, you put a U. If you, for, if you didn't round correctly, R. And then those would be half mark deductions uh, at the end. A maximum of one full deduction for this whole page. So for those, these are called communication errors. So I wouldn't take off more than a full mark, but I would tell myself every single time that I made a mistake. Okay. Next. What do we have here? Oh, side, side, side. Okay. Still cosine law, but the, the formula looks a little different, and it's asking to solve for angle Z. So it's this one right here that we want. Okay, so that then we start like this, cosine of Z. All right, there's a plus and a minus, and we want this side up here. Okay. And then the other two fill up the remaining spots. Is this going to be the largest angle? No. The largest angle would have been Y. But uh, oh, this looks like, so when you do your work, make sure you write the numbers correctly, because sometimes you fool yourself even, right? Is that a 4 or a 9, right? So make sure you get that right. And yes, sometimes the numbers are going to be quite large, right? The ones that you get out of this. So when you type in the top, you should get 75, 75.04. And the bottom gives you 11,714.56. Okay. I would say if you have that part and everything done correctly there, you get a mark already. Okay. Just for choosing cosine law and plugging it in, and then we'll give you another mark for the step in between. Sorry for the interruption. Yes. Um. All right. So there we have it. Uh, one last step. I just don't have room for that, but if you divide this, you should get 0 0.6466, and that keeps going. Okay? So angle Z would be cosine inverse 64 so forth. Angle Z is... 4971. I, I need to see this step. I don't really need to see the decimal. I would prefer it, but I wouldn't take any marks off if that's missing. I'm just assuming, like if you want to skip this step right here and just show up with a decimal right here when you take the inverse, that's fine with me. Okay. Just have a significant amount like so that there's a storyline. Okay, I can follow your work. Next, this one is worth three. Uh, measure of angle F, so this one. We can tell visually that that's probably an obtuse. However, none of these triangles are ever drawn to scale. Okay? So you can't bring a protractor and figure out what the angle is like that. Uh, for To find this angle, first of all, this is side, side, side. So we are cosine law again. So cosine of F. Right, plus or minus, 
we put the longest side at the, uh, sorry, the side across the angle we want right here at the end, and then everything else gets filled in. Order doesn't matter there, no. There we go. And then the top gives us negative 6 exactly, which is interesting. And the bottom is 16.8. So one mark for cosine law. I, I actually give a full mark for that negative, okay? So if you don't have the negative, if you dropped it, I would say minus 1. Then, <clears throat> to continue this even further, if I divide this, I get negative 0 0.3571, uh, and that keeps going. Angle F would be found by taking the inverse. Angle F is going to be greater than 90, right? Um, you know that because of this. And because of that negative, you know that it's going to be greater than 90. So that's the answer. So one mark for setup. And the other mark you might just get automatically. If you get an obtuse here, you get it automatically. Uh, because I'm assuming you did account for the negative. Otherwise, you wouldn't get the obtuse angle there. Okay. So what are we at here? 2, 4, and 3, that's 7. 7 total. Keep going. <clears throat> Back side. So a bit of a word problem here. By the way, most questions are going to be around some kind of word problem on the exam and the test as well. But they will provide you with a diagram. Okay. Alex and Carmen standing 850 feet apart. That's already included in our diagram when they notice a weather balloon up here, so that's B. Um, the angle of elevation from Alex's view to the balloon is 55. What is an angle of elevation again? It's between the horizontal and a line going up, right? So that it gets literally gets measured from here going up. So if it says Alex here, then this is 55 here. It starts from the horizontal, goes up to there, right? That's how you measure it. The angle of elevation from Carmen is, right, it's over here, so the 42 degree angle goes there. Um, it says, A, the measure of angle ABC. What angle is that? A, B, C. So it's when you make the connections, this is the angle that results from you making, connecting those three points. So basically angle B. So for, uh, where do we do that? Right here. Angle ABC is going to be found by going 180 minus 55 minus 42. And that's 83 degrees. So if you have that, you get a mark. Wow, right? But that is. Every time you have to do this and they ask for it, that's a mark right there. The direct distance from each person to the balloon. Direct distance, right? It means like, right? Like if you were to just go straight to it, okay? So let's uh, call this, give it some letters. Uh, I don't know, you can call this X and Y. That's what they're asking for. You can call this C and A. It's up to you. I don't really care what you did there. So I have a pair, right? If this is 83 here, I basically set it up for you to, to get the pair there. So sine of 83 over 850 and I'm gonna go sine of 55 and just make sure I have letter A there if you call this X then X should be down here okay. so A is found by cross multiplying and dividing so it's 850 times sine of 55 and then divide by sine of 83 so A is 701.51 feet. You get two marks for this one, right? For the for doing all this work. Um, for this would be to be uh, just to be uh, clear, distance between Carmen and balloon. Oops. There you go. 
can't see that, but I'm just clearly saying that this distance between Carmen and the balloon. And then over on the other side, I use the exact same pair, but this time I'm going to use sine of 42 degrees. This angle is going to allow me to solve for side C. Okay. So it's 850 times sine of 42 divided by sine of 83. And side C is 573.03 feet. This is Alex to balloon. Okay, just being clear there. So two marks, two and two for for that. But the back side in total has is worth five, right? Five for the back side. So you've got seven and five, twelve overall. Oh, finally for once it is the mark that's up on the top of the page. Put your name and last name on there. <clears throat>